I crammed these drawings in last night. Late. <laughs> so uh, they might not be as thorough as they could be. But things you'll need to know about is um, this is a really poor example of the LED. If any of you are confused, please ask me. I'll come by and take a look at it. But essentially, there's a square edge, and then there's a long lead and a short lead. And if you can look through the lens, the longer lead has a small substrate area, and the shorter lead has the longer part of it. Anyway, the long one is the positive. That's the anode. And when you look at your uh, TRS connectors, looking down the side of it, you can see pieces of like Bakelite insulation um, between uh, the various connection tabs and then I guess the poles in the connector. The one closest to the entrance of the jack is the tip. And then the next one in the middle is the ring. And then finally the last one on the, um, if it's oriented like that, the one farthest to the right, closest to the wiring side, the end of it, that's the sleeve. So, TRS. Male, when uh, picturing it from the rear of the connector, um, what I always do with XLRs is that there's always a polarizing uh, channel or keyway on the male, and then there's a nub or whatever, for lack of a word, um, on the female. That's always pinned too. Uh, I think all of these, uh, there are two types of the XLRs that we ended up getting just because that's what it was available. If you're lucky enough to have matching ones, good for you. Um, if, uh, if not, um, one's silver, made of metal, the other one's plastic, black. Um, they are, they do have pin identifiers written, but it's in really tiny, tiny um, script. So if you can see that, great, but what I always do is I just key in on the polarizing keyway or the nub, know that that's two, and then directly across from that is one, and obviously three is below. And then, probably the most screwy of all pinouts uh, is the DIN 5. And this guy viewed from the rear. One, three, two, four, five. We're only interested in two, four, and five. And pretty much.
RCA, but the RCA I think is pretty obvious because it's uh, it's got a center socket for the pin, and then the outer sleeve. There's a little tab. Uh, that's um, that's the ground. So let's see. That said, Mr. Cameraman, um, this is about the simplest cable tester thing that there is, I think. Um, uh, it's essentially like grade school DC circuit. So if we just think about it as, we'll just take one of the pins, you know, where you have the, well, they don't do this in grade school anymore, unfortunately, but you have the lantern battery and some wires and some light bulbs and essentially, you know, uh, plus goes to, to the light bulb from the battery and minus goes back. To the, uh, to the battery from the light bulb, you complete the circuit and the light lights. Um, so this is doing the same thing, except we're using, um, I'm not a port space, but you can visualize this. <laughs> um, essentially, we're using the cable under test to complete the circuit between the quote unquote input side of your uh, cable tester and the only way to really distinguish that is it's the side that has the female XLR on it, um, which I did mine, which I'll pass around here in a second, on the left as you're looking at it from the top. And then the quote-unquote output side is only distinguished because it has the XLR uh, male, and it's on the right as you're looking, from it, uh, looking at it from above. But I don't know, it's not really... To me, it's not really appropriate to think of it really as an input or an output cable. It's just essentially if you're plugging in a cable to type of connector on both sides of it, it's going to make uh, the connection of the circuit. And then we have the extra added bonus of three momentary push button switches, um, which when it's wired correctly and the cable's wired correctly, if you push the first switch, it should light the first LED, the second one, the second one, the third one, the third one. If you press it and something else lights, you know that your cable is crosswired or you know uh, going somewhere it shouldn't be. And where it does light up is what tells you what it's wired to. And if you push an LED down and more than one LED lights or switch down one one LED lights, obviously you have a short or maybe it's an intentional tie. Um, we don't know. And if you press the LEDs uh, the switches, if nothing happens with the LEDs, then obviously it's completely open circuit and. Uh, not working. Um, so the cable completes the circuit and the switch just uh, basically lets um, connects the positive end of the battery to whatever's on the quote unquote female side. It goes through the cable, comes back in through the quote unquote male side. Uh, current is limited to about 10 milliamps. Um, by the 1K resistor, uh, lights the green LED, and uh, then returns to back to the battery. So, what I found, and actually I'll, I'll pass this guy around in in a part so you can, well, actually have a look at it. You can smooth it. Bit, but be careful because, like a dummy, I mounted all my connectors on the center line of the box where the split was. And while that's fine for me to frustrate myself and hassle trying to get it together and close correctly, we modified the drill out patterns to put those above the line so it's a little easier for you. Um, however, the DIN 5s or the MIDIs and the XLRs will have to be placed in and pinned at least the XLR pinned with one screw, and then when you're finally done uh, and closing the box up, you'll add the remaining screw to the XLR connectors to, uh, to get it going. Um, that said, I'm going to shut this just because the ambient hole noise is weirding me out. Um, there is no really, I mean, other than observing the proper polarity of the LEDs um, and keeping track of your pins so that you don't crosswire your own cable tester, um, there is no right or wrong way to do this. 
Uh, it's completely up to you and your style as to how neat you want to make it. Um, I did mine in about 50 minutes and it looks okay. It's certainly not great. Um, how many people in here actually have soldered? Good. <laughs> All right. And of oh, those people, let's see, uh, cables and headphones and repairs, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, printed circuit boards, anyone? Okay, good, good, good. Uh, how about point to point wiring? That's it. Excellent. Well, this is essentially free form point to point wiring. It's literally a sculpture in air because there is no printed circuit board. Um, and I discovered, I went like, I, I, first as I mounted my connectors and I just wired everything up in parallel. But actually, I found out it's probably easier. And there are, if you want to take the time or whatever to read through my little liner notes, you know, please go ahead. But I recommend, yes, mounting all your connectors uh, to the project box first. And then do the LEDs, switches, and batteries, and everything that has common connections, lay that down as a base first, and then the, la or the later step should be to actually wire all the connectors on each side in parallel to each other. And then I think what I did was the XLR male, um, connects directly to the resistors and that takes care of that side and then on the other side the TRS on the quote unquote input side was closest to the switches and that's kind of where you know it ends up. Um, I definitely recommend once you get things mounted and your common connections made and you want to start uh, wiring up the connectors in parallel uh, would be to do this or here, first of all, don't do this. Don't estimate each wire and cut all your wire lengths and strip everything and tin everything and then start trying to put it together because chances are you're gonna run out of wire and also your wire probably won't be as good as you thought it would was estimated. I recommend taking whatever piece of wire you're gonna work and stripping just a little bit off one end, tinning that, attaching it to the first point that you wanna do, then taking that whole wire and bringing it over to the second thing that you're going to attach it to. Leave a little loop, a little service loop, so we don't want any of this stuff under strain. We don't want it getting caught in the TRS connectors or anything like that. So leave a little service loop. Once you've made that run or a measurement, then cut the wire, the remainder of the wire off, set it aside, strip it, tin and put it on. So basically you just take your whatever piece of wire and you run it, mm, cut it, run it, cut it. So basically you're using as you go, using the, the colors of wire. Um, that way you probably won't run out. And also you won't get overwhelmed by a pile of different colored wires. Um, I definitely recommend using the same color for the same type of connections. I'm not sure exactly what kind of wire we have off the top of my head, but for instance, all the grounds, pin ones, sleeves or whatever, use green wire for all that. All the, well, <laughs> use a color for that, okay? And then all the t tips, pin twos, pin four, the many of the hots or whatever, use one color for all of that. And then finally, you have 10 inches of each color. <laughs> now, we actually have some excess wire if you guys run out. Um, and then I, I just whatever style points you want to do. Uh, I would probably save the red and the black for your common connections uh, for the battery, um, you know, for the hot lead that goes to uh, the switches and then the black wire for the ground of the battery or the negative end of the battery um, from the <coughs> cathodes of the LEDs. Now, you notice I did this wacky, I used the leads of the LEDs to, f to basically form the circuit and I used some shrink tube or whatever to keep those from crossing and stuff like that. You definitely don't have to do that. You might want to go ahead and cut your LED lead short and just use short pieces of wire with a little bit of heat shrink tube. It might be neater. You know, again, that's uh, that's totally up to you. Um, 
So, you know, again, as far as a high-level electronics project, this definitely isn't one. But uh, uh, as a handy do-it-yourself thing, uh, I think it's pretty cool. You can make the best of you, out of it as you can. Um, I'd say take your time, and most importantly is uh, let's all try to keep from cutting and burning ourselves <laughs> uh, while we do it. And um, I guess that's about it. Any questions? I'm here all evening. I'm happy to take a look as you go and give you suggestions. Oh, and then, as an extra added bonus, okay, so initially, A, we wanted to keep this as simple as possible. Um, and B, there was a cost issue, um, which, by the way, this is actually right on the line where the AES is not making money off you from these kits. Maybe if we did these in gargantuan quantities, it would be cheaper, but pretty much it ends up being around 30 bucks, and, 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 and that's uh, what it is. But your average cable tester of the non-technical variety is about 45 or 50 bucks, and a super duper digital one button press does it all thingy is probably about a hundred bucks. Um, I actually like the simpler design for some reasons better. One thing is the ones that have digital might have like a 555, you know, uh, uh, monostable kind of, uh, actually that's not the word for it, but some kind of clock oscillator to clock through and, you know, take an encoder or decoder and pulse all the pins and then latch that into comparators or something like that. It gets ridiculously complicated in the fact that, well, yeah, it'll flip, but it might approve something that, what it won't tell you is what the quality of the connection is. It's kind of a go or no go. This one is such that the LEDs glow pretty brightly when the battery's good, which by the way, the battery should last practically forever, provided you don't like leave a cable plugged into it and smash it down in your road case with all the switches down. Uh, the battery will never go out. But if the LEDs glow dimmer than they normally should, or they change in brightness when you wiggle or agitate the cable or something like that, it's going to indicate that you have a higher or variable resistance on one of the pins. So that's going to tell you kind of have a crappy connection. So the uh, other cable testers necessarily won't point that out. Um, but I couldn't help myself in that, well, God, I've got to do more than just these three switches and three LEDs. So you'll notice in your packet there's a second page to the schematic where I have a couple of modifications that we don't have the parts for in your kit, but if you're so inclined and you think it came out groovy and you have enough room in your box when you're done, uh, with the addition of a probably $3.50 three-pole dual-throw switch, and a 15 cent LED, and oh, actually, R4 should be 100 ohms, not one kilo ohms. Uh, if you buy those three parts and uh, modify your circuit and install it as drawn on this uh, wonderful schematic, it turns the cable tester into passive mode, allowing you to test. Um, MIDI signals coming in on the quote-unquote input side DIN connector that will light and flash in the presence of MIDI data. And uh, it will turn the XLR male on the quote-unquote output side uh, into an indicator of whether or not phantom power or clear comm or some kind of communications power is in fact present on pins two and three. So if you're into it, um, for a little bit of dough and a little more time, you can make the super duper version. Um, and then I also mentioned too that if you really want to get jiggy with it, you can put reversed red LEDs in parallel as well, so that if you hooked up to something that was in an improper polarity of the MIDI and or phantom power, uh, they would glow red. Or for way too much money and really hard to find, you could uh, try to find some four lead bicolor LEDs them up so that you get a red when it's wrong and green when it's good. But, so, and that's about the story of the cable tester. Any questions? <laughs> well, that said, so probably, you know, those of you who are good or better at it than I am should have a nice looking box done in about an hour.
um, others of you will take two hours or more, and hopefully not, but somebody might end up with a big mess of wire in the end of two hours. I don't know. Mainly, have fun.